people starting to use less SCSS, SAS, CoffeeScript, Stylus, and a few others, it's getting more and more common that we need to be able to pre-compile all of these assets when we run our application and then also compile them for production. In this video we're going to go over Django Pipeline which actually helps us with that process. First if we take a look and we'll see a stylus file that sets a background color of green and our font size to 30 pixels. This is an example usage. And then if we'll also look we have a CoffeeScript file that does an alert on load of the page. On our featured carousel it'll do a console.log. And now our next step is to install Django Pipeline. We do that by simply doing pip install Django Pipeline. And then we're actually ready to start using it. First thing we do is we configure it in our settings file by adding pipeline to installed app. And then we follow that up by taking a quick look at some of our static file settings. Since this directly deals with our static files, we need to make sure that we have everything set up correctly. And I actually have a video over that and I'll link to that in the show notes. But for a quick look, we set our static files dir so that we know where to get all of our static files. We're also setting the root location of our static files that we would use in production. And then finally, we're setting the URL of our static file as slash static. Next thing we need to do is we need to set our static file storage, a storage backend for the pipeline. In this case, pipeline.storage.pipelinedcached storage. This is used for how pipeline will actually save and store your compiled assets. The next thing we have is pipeline compilers. We need to set all the compilers that we want to use. In this case, we're going to do pipeline compilers coffee coffee script compiler. And then we're also going to do the stylus compiler as well. The great thing about these is it goes through the list of your assets and if it ends in coffee, it compiles it down to JavaScript. And if it ends with STYL, it compiles the stylus down to CSS. And then the final two settings that we're actually going to mess with is pipeline JS and also pipeline CSS. We're going to populate these dictionaries with a group of files for each for us to actually call on our templates. The purpose of grouping and mapping out all of our files is so that the pipeline actually knows what files we're going to use and compile and to convert and minify. Pipeline is great because it will not only compile our assets from the original to CSS or JavaScript, but it also will compress it and minify it. So the next piece of this is to actually look at our dictionary. The first thing we do is we give it a key of the name of our group. In this case, we're going to do main because this is going to be the main coffee script of our JavaScript files. We give it the source file names. And then we also give it an output file name. In this case, we're going to do js slash main.js. So this is going to put it in static slash js slash main.js. And it will be minified. The next thing that we do is we give it the location of our asset that we want it to compile and or compress. In this case we're doing coffee slash app dot coffee. We could just as easily add a JavaScript file and it would just pass through and be minified. So what we have here is we have our main group and this is this main is what we're going to reference in our templates. To show that a little better we have vendor files so of jQuery and Bootstrap and so we add another group of vendor that has source file names and output file name. Finally we need to do the exact same with our pipeline CSS. Again we have a main group with source file names and an output file name. Hopefully at this point you're seeing the pattern in how you have everything. Just to make it a little more clear, if everything in the source file names dictionary you can have multiple styles and everything and it will all compile down into one file and that is the output file name. This helps you be able to partition things out and then at the end of the day you're only importing one file. And that's it for our configuration of pipeline. So the next thing is that's all fine and dandy you get to do all of this configuration but how does it actually compile it all and what does it use? So pipeline can be configured to use many different things but by default it uses your environment's coffee binary and your environment's stylus binary or any binary that is executable by the environment for the technology that you're using. 
You can set settings to directly go to a executable. So if you have them in a, in a separate location that is not in the environment for it to call, that's okay too. In our case, we have stylus and coffee in our environment to execute directly. The other thing Pipeline does is it calls YUglify, which is a wrapper for tiny CSS and Uglify.js, so that it will compress both JavaScript and CSS. And again, that's a binary I have in my environment that it can just call directly. The next thing is, let's actually move on to our template where we actually are going to call everything. First thing we need to do is we need to load compressed template tags. Then we just call compressed CSS and give it the name of our group. If you remember, we have the group name of main. We also do compressed JS and another name, in this case vendor, and then compressed JS and the group name of main. What this is going to do in our test environment is it's going to actually do the compilation on the fly and include each individual file. That way you don't have to worry about doing the compilation yourself or calling collect static to build everything. It just works and is, has some great defaults for what you're doing in development. Django Pipeline also knows when you're in production and uses the proper files, aka the minified files, and puts them in the right, the right locations when you do collect static. So with that, I think we're actually ready to look at a demo. So if we open up our browser and go, we have hello world. Okay, and then we have a green background. So just to prove that what that does, let's go ahead and change our coffee script to change our log carousel into alert carousel click. And then go back in our demo. Then we reload and we get hello world again. Then we click our carousel, boom. And we got that. Let's click it a couple more times. And each time we have our carousel clicked event. So we have all that said and done. And so I also talked about collect static, which is what you would use in production. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. We'll do our collect static. Yes, it does all the compilation. Then after that, we can actually take a look at it. So we'll do vim static final, which is where our configuration set our compiled assets to go. And well, let's look at our main.js. We'll notice that we have it all compiled down into JavaScript and it's been minified. We can also look at our CSS and it's been compiled down and minified as well.